Recently, the Tibetan parliament in exile was able to revive the all-party Indian Parliamentarian Forum for Tibet, APIPFT, a Tibet support group comprised of Indian parliamentarians formed in the year 1970, primarily focuses on raising the issue of Tibet in the Indian parliament and garnering support from the Indian government towards the cause of Tibet. Today we have with us Lagari Namgyal Torgar, a member of Tibetan parliament who was also a part of Tibetan parliamentary delegation that undertook the Tibet advocacy campaign in New Delhi. In today's episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV, we will talk about the functions of the parliamentary groups for Tibet in general and all party Indian parliamentary forum for Tibet in particular. So first of all, can I ask you, what does the revival of the all-party Indian Parliamentarian Forum mean? Well, I want to begin by offering my greetings to the viewers of Tibet TV from the Tibetan Parliament in exile. So the all-party Indian Parliamentarians Forum for Tibet, as you have introduced, it was formed in 1970s. So the reason why it was formed was so that Tibet issue could be raised uh, within the parliamentarians' house, uh, but beyond that as well, because uh, when we are talking about Tibet advocacy, we shouldn't limit it to one particular platform. Uh, but we understand that Indian platform or any, uh, any uh, parliamentarian house is very important when it comes to Tibet advocacy. Hence, in the 70s, uh, the all-party Indian Parliamentarians Forum for Tibet was formed. And uh, we have, I would say that the Forum for Tibet has in the past uh, performed many important responsibilities uh, with the support and actually the responsibility of the Indian Parliamentarians, uh, including uh, the actual presence and uh, uh, speech by His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama at uh, the Indian Parliament House Annex in 1995 and 2000, uh, 2005. So I think those are very important events. And apart from that, uh, we the, the fact that a World Parliamentarian Convention for Tibet began in India uh, uh, due to the impact of the APIPFT. So I think those play a very important role when it comes to Tibet advocacy. Uh, so I would say that it's important that we not only revive the uh, APIPFT, but make sure that it works smoothly in future because every five year uh, there is re-election happening. Mm -hmm. And many a times uh, our members uh, aren't necessarily re-elected. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that uh, we continue to uh, gain more members within the Forum for Tibet and uh, the voice of Tibetans uh, within the Indian Parliamentarian continue to grow. So that's the reason why we uh, many often continue to use the word uh, revival. And this time, yet again, we have done that, particularly also because of uh, the uh, COVID situation mm -hmm. Uh, and also the fact that the former convener, Shanta Kumarji, mm -hmm. uh, he was not re-elected. Mm -hmm. Hence, you know, the space within the APIPFT remained vacant for a while. So uh, the fact that we have revived it uh, and have uh, re-elected, or I can say that appointed or uh, unanimously appointed a new convener uh, sends out a very strong message. Well, there are parliamentary support groups in America, Canada, in Europe, and so on. But uh, how does the all-party Indian Parliamentary Forum um, makes it different? And why is it so uh, pivotal or significant? I would say that certainly I wouldn't you know, uh, way between all the uh, parliamentarians forum for Tibet around the world. But I can certainly say with much uh, confidence that the all party Indian parliamentarians forum for Tibet plays a very, very crucial role because uh, we know the fact that His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama reside in this country. Mm -hmm. We know for the fact that CTA is based here in this country and all the major Tibetan NGOs are based in this country and uh, the major settlements, Tibetan monasteries, schools are all in India. Hence, it is important that the support for uh, Tibet cause and uh, Tibet diaspora uh, is not just uh, limited towards the ruling party, but the entire Indian people. And uh, the uh, parliamentarians are the representatives of the people. So it's important that we ensure the support of uh, different uh, parliamentarians to ensure that you know uh, uh, CTA continues to run smoothly and uh, yes, uh, the voice of Tibetans inside Tibet. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. is heard um, in India. So there are about 800 parliamentarians in India, um, both in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha altogether. 780, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and there are, there are only 40 uh, pal uh, Tibet supporters, parliamentarians. So why do you think there's such a last number? Uh, you know, we have been asked that question several times, but I would say that, you know, so far, uh, the kind of uh, position that we have been in at say Tibet issue, mm -hmm. I think we were not able to push in the leverage mm -hmm. that Tibet issue is and how we were not able to say pre present to the world of how the uh, you know strategic interest of India mm -hmm. and Tibet cause are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's important that we uh, bring out that message to the Indian parliamentarians too. Mm -hmm. So w this time when we approached our uh, uh, Indian parliamentarians, we made sure that we informed that it's not just about them supporting Tibet cause, it's about them standing as, you know, Indian democratic leaders mm -hmm. for their own sovereign, sovereign, you know, as Indian nation. So it was important that they send out a message. When I say message, I mean message to China. So, uh, and I would say that message was very clearly received since, you know, uh, we saw in Indian Express mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, uh, the Chinese embassy literally sent a warning le letter, you know, I choose to call it a love letter, <laughs> to uh, our members of APIPFT mm -hmm. to stay away from them. So I would say that, you know, the fact that we have started this process, uh, it is sending a uh, uh, message to Chinese embassy and CCP that you know it will get stronger. So I would say that currently uh, the delegation, this is the first ever delegation with that we have been in. Uh, the Tibetan parliament exile, we want to ensure that it doesn't stop with one process. We want to continue this process and perhaps hope that we can cross a century. It's not about record, but it's certainly about uh, gaining more voices within uh, you know, uh, the Indian parliament, because we know the kind of, uh, you know, voices that exist uh, within the Indian public, and we want that to be reflected in the Indian parliament. So uh, the honorable Indian parliamentarian certainly understands the value of forum like APIPFT, hence I believe that, you know, currently uh, it's 40, but uh, within a year or so, we hope to raise the number, double the number, and make sure that, you know, uh, the Indian parliamentarians are uh, raise their voice as stronger as they've ha they have done in past. So uh, let's see, it's a process and we've just begun. So Namgila, can you tell us how does the Tibet supporters uh, in parliament from different governments work towards um, you know, creating awareness on Tibet and making policies regarding the freedom of Tibet? Uh, so I would say that so far, when it comes to uh, policy, uh, you know, creating policy, uh, sending out a message to China or say around the world, um, Indian Parliament, Indian Parliament hasn't come out with any concrete, say, policy other than one China policy. But what we hope for is, uh, even if India endorses one China policy, uh, but I, but I do want to add that, you know, India changes that one, one day uh, soon. But, you know, while they do that, they ensure to send out a message of concern about the human rights abuses taking place inside Tibet. Because it's their responsibility as the largest democratic nation uh, to make sure that their voice you know, the voice of people and the voice of the government is heard. And it can only be assured or enveloped through, uh, you know, strong policies. So we want the kind of policies that we have seen in America and other nations to be, uh, uh, you know, reenacted in India as well. So I would say that, you know, right now uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a dream that we have, but we know that it's in the interest of India. So right now, I wouldn't say that, you know, please support Tibet, please support Tibet, but I would certainly tell, I would certainly request and appeal to the Indian parliamentarians that this is in the benefit of the Indian government and the Indian people and the sovereign of this nation that perhaps, you know, they can, you know, send a message through a stronger policy in the future. So uh, let's see, we've begun the work and we hope that we will have our Indian parliamentarians uh, the members of the APIPFT on board uh, as we continue to work with them in the future. Well, thank you so much, Namgidola, for taking out your time with Tibet TV today. And thank you for everything that you do for our course. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Sitla, for having me. Yes, yeah, my responsibility. Thank, Thank you. you.